been announced. So let's go through, well, eh, let's go through most of them. Welcome to the newest episode of SDW. Soup. Alright, so first I kind of have to announce something. Uh, next week, you may not see me. Uh, it's highly likely that you will not see me next week. I have, I've been asked to help out of work, and so I'm going to be pretty much doing doubles all next week. So I, I don't know if I'll have time to do a podcast, to be honest. And I, I want to because The Mandalorian starts on Friday, but I still have to catch up on The Boys, and I have to catch up on... Uh, on Raised by Wolves, and I want to keep, I want to go back to doing the good, the bad, and the Mandalorian, so I may just do that Saturday, maybe, I, mean, I know I usually do it on Mondays, but you'll get a special Saturday one, I guess, uh, I'm still not sure how that's going to work, but yeah, next week, I'm, I'm doing doubles all week long, so, like I said, I don't know, maybe, if I have time, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll sneak one here or there, maybe I'll just do audio something quick at the station, but who knows, well, I'll play it by ear, that's how I usually tend to do things, I'll play it by ear, but, uh, before we get into this fun topic, let me just give you a quick reminder that any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can find me at Diary of the Show on Instagram and at Super Diary World. Also, I'm, I'm trying to live stream every single episode. Some of them don't work. Like last Friday's, for some reason, my internet just decided we're not uploading today. Um, right now, it looks like it's fine, so hopefully it'll stay that way. But yeah, live streaming, uh, you can find me on Twitch at Super Diary World and on YouTube at Super Diary World. So... Let's get into this. And well, well, before we get into this, I have breaking news. Breaking news. And by breaking news, I mean something that happened yesterday. But it's been confirmed, unfortunately, that Cyberpunk 2077 has been delayed once again. Now, I've talked about this before. It's a bittersweet topic. Um, we kind of, well, we kind of saw it coming in a way because, uh, uh, well, Project, uh, Project CD Project Red. I'm sorry, that's the name of the studio who who's making the game. They don't like releasing unfinished products. They rather finish the game and delay it and all that stuff. Unlike other studios, they're like, well, just release it now and we'll make money and then we'll fix it afterwards. So that's a good thing. I mean, it's better for them not to release it if it's not completely finished. But it sucks because now we have to wait even longer. Uh, it's been delayed now. The official release date, as of right now, is December twen December tenth. 2020 so if that changes again i'll keep you updated the the one good piece of news here is that well now if you buy a ps5 or the new xbox or the sex box then you would be able to purchase it for that but again we don't know it might change again who knows like honestly no nothing makes any sense anymore honestly at least time wise the calendars don't exist they're a myth but anyway uh, also, another piece of news for those of you who care, it's been announced and confirmed that Alita Battle Angel will be returning to theaters on October 30th. Why this is happening, I have no idea. But it's a fun movie. I enjoyed watching it in the theaters. If you enjoyed watching it too, I recommend it. Like I said, it was fun. It was a fun experience. It got uh, really good effects. It's directed by Robert Rodriguez. It is uh, produced by James Cameron, the James Cameron. And uh, it's a fun adventure. Honestly, it's a fun movie to watch. It's probably the best manga adaptation I've ever seen into at least into live action. So I recommend it. Honestly, I really enjoyed it. It's a good franchise. I really hope that they decide to continue it, but we don't know. But like I said, news is as of right now on October 30th, Alita will return to theaters. Why? I have no idea. Like, I legitimately have no idea. I, I'm guessing this is what, what's going to be happening with studios, that they're just like, well, we can't bring out new movies, so we'll just bring out old ones and hope it'll make us money. I mean, theaters aren't really open yet, so I don't, I have, like I said, I have no idea why they're doing this. But if you didn't, if you didn't catch it the first time, I recommend it. It's a fun watch. Anyway, let's move on to all the new shows that have been announced, because we have a plethora. Well, actually, one actually has an official release date, and it's coming pretty soon. So, I'm not even sure if I haven't talked about it already, but uh, the Animaniacs have returned, well, are returning to the silver screen uh, after a 22-year hiatus. Now, this show uh, will be produced, by, again, by Steven Spielberg, and it will air on Hulu starting November 20th. 
Now, I don't know about you guys, but I love the Animaniacs. They're ridiculous and stupid, and I saw the trailer. They kind of tried to update some things. I'm not sure how it's going to work, but it looks like they're at least trying to be as ridiculous, as silly as the original ones. And more importantly, Pinky and the Brain will be back. So, zoinks! <laughs> I'm, I'm really looking... Honestly, I'm looking forward to Pinky and the Brain more than the Animaniacs. So, or at least... Uh, what, what type of animal were they? They're like rabbit cats ah who knows what the hell they are but yeah looking forward to that again new episodes on hulu on november 20th so there you go if you cared now you know uh next it's been confirmed by disney and marvel studios that moon knight the character moon knight the comic book character will be getting its own series and it'll be official mcu series now will it air on disney plus probably and, uh, and by probably, I mean, yes, definitely it will be on, on Disney+. Plus. We just don't know if it's going to stream somewhere before. Now, I'm thinking it is, but uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things that it's, uh, until I see it on paper, I'm not sure, but whatever. Uh, it, the series has a director, and it kind of already has a writer. Now, the director, I don't know much about. He's a director, director Mohamed Diab, and he's an Egyptian filmmaker. He's made Egyptian movies, never heard of them before. So, honestly, I don't know if he's good or not. But uh, the writer is going to be written. It's going to be a team of writers. And the leader, the lead writer will be Jeremy Slater, who you may or may not know from Netflix's The Umbrella Academy, which is actually a pretty fun show. So it's a dude who kind of knows superheroes, which is a good thing. Now, for those of you who don't know who Moon Knight is, Moon Knight is, imagine, pretty much if Batman and Deadpool had a baby. That's the best way to describe him. It's a fun hero. It's a fun read. Uh, it's kind of really wild, really violent. So, uh, it's a fun, it's a fun read. So if you've never read it before, I recommend it. It's fun. If you have, well, then you know what the, what the hell's going to happen. How is that going to fit into Disney plus? Will they make it PG? Uh, I would definitely not recommend it. It should be a rate. It should be Moon Knight should be a hard R, a hard R definitely. Uh, so I'm a little bit concerned there. Um, cause Disney has said that they will keep Marvel PG 13. Why? Cause money, they, they will keep Marvel stuff PG 13. Cause again, money. So I'm, I'm concerned about the future of Deadpool and I'm concerned about Moon Knight because this thing should be, honestly, if it would have been Amazon, I would have been happier because Amazon has shown that they, they're really not afraid. I, you know, I kind of pause here cause this kind of made a little bit of news talking about Amazon. Um, it's been rumored that Amazon will introduce nudity into, or they're thinking about introducing nudity into the Lord of the Rings series and the fan base just went bonkers. Like, the memes have been hysterical. I highly recommend you check them out. But it's it's been uh, from everything uh, of, uh, like, uh, like uh, Boromir being like, the Lord of the Rings has no nudity. The Lord of the Rings needs no nudity. Uh, to Sam being... Uh, at, uh, to Sam's speech, you know what? Probably Sam's best speech in the whole series. Uh, when, when, um, when they say, when you hear that, uh, that the fan, that the Lord of the Rings fan base does not want nudity in, oh, that a fan base does not want to see all the female characters nude, uh, nude or whatever, blah blah. Because there's still hope in this world, Mister Frodo, and it's worth fighting for. <laughs> so the memes have been great. I've enjoyed them. I uh, honestly, obviously, I did not do it justice. You can go check them out by yourself. But yeah, interesting piece of news. In case you cared. So, for Moon Knight, Amazon would have made it way more sense, but, you know, it's what they're owned by Disney, and they're going to be on Disney+, Plus, and who knows what they're going to do with it. Hopefully, they don't neuter the character, but, again, money. Money always wins, unfortunately, so we'll see. Hopefully, you know, fingers crossed. Anyway, moving on, uh, Netflix has announced that they will have a TV series, well, a streaming series, live-action series, based on the Assassin's Creed franchise. Now, it's not confirmed what uh, what timeline this series is going to take place in. But for those of you who don't know, uh, Assassin's Creed basically is the story of a dude that's descended from assassins. And there's a machine that sends him to relive the memories of his ancestors who were assassins. Obviously, it's way more complicated than that. But I think that's a fair way to describe it in the beginning and avoids any spoilers. So, uh, here's the statement. From uh, Netflix's VP of original series is, we're excited to partner with Ubisoft and bring and bring to life the rich, multi-layered storytelling that Assassin's Creed is beloved for. 
From its breathtaking historical worlds and massive global appeal as one of the best-selling video game franchises of all time, we are committed to carefully crafting epic and thrilling entertainment based on the distinct IP, intellectual property, and provide a deeper dive for fans and our members around the world to enjoy. Now, a movie has been made based off of Assassin's Creed, and it sucked. Why? Because the movie had the exact same problem that the video game had. What's the problem with the video game? The story of the past, you know, the things that happened in the past, is way, way, way more interesting than what's happening in current time. The, the main character, the current time character, the one that's going to the past through the machine, sucks. He's annoying. He's boring. All the fun stuff is happening in the past. Same thing with the movie. Michael Fassbender put in a pretty decent performance. Point is, every single thing that happened, like, in current time, sucked. It was boring. The machine made no fucking sense. Nothing made any fucking sense. But the, fast, the past stuff was actually pretty fun. It was fun to watch. So, uh, how are they going to handle this here? I don't know. It should have been an anime. Honestly, this should not be a live action thing. It should be an anime based off of the success of Castlevania and the animation that they can do there. I would have gone anime, but they want to do live action, even though like, live action already failed. It's their fucking money. They can do whatever they want with it. Now, a lot of people are concerned because we don't exactly know more details. We don't know again, which is it going to be Ezio. We have no idea. But um, let's just say Netflix does not have uh, terrible track record here. Like I said, they did a Witcher, a live-action Witcher series. They did, they did the Castlevania series. So their record not completely terrible. They have Netflix has a bad record overall on TV shows because they make a lot of crap, and they make a lot of really, really stupid crap. Uh, overall, with the big franchises, it it's been okay. It's been okay, especially with the big video game, game franchises. It's been an okay job. They just kind of need to get out of their own way. If Netflix gets out of their own way and lets the creative team behind Ubisoft do their thing, who, 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 by the way, hopefully have learned by now what was the good thing about the story and what was the thing that people didn't like, then it could actually be pretty fun to watch. But I'll still maintain. As of right now, I think it should be an anime. But anyway, let's move on. Uh, next, HBO has confirmed the return of Tiny Toons. So, <laughs> I love Tiny Toons. I don't know about you guys. I actually, I was about to say something crazy. I was about to say that I preferred it over Looney Tunes, but that's just, that's, that's just insanity. No, I, I probably watched it more because I grew up in the generation where I think that started and Looney Tunes was kind of on the way out. But I, I really did enjoy Tiny Toons. I'm a big, I'm a big fan. I, and we had a video game that was based on Tiny Toons because that, that's probably why I know them a little bit better. Um... Will it make sense now? It's the same issue with, with the Animaniacs. They're going to have to adapt it. Uh, I'm concerned with the adaptation of the Looney Tunes that has recently been made. I don't know. It's HBO Max. Uh, HBO Max has done reasonably good stuff. And so we'll see how they handle it. Right now, like I said, it's just been announced. And it will be straight to HBO Max. And they're partnering with Amblin Tel Television to, to return to this uh, particularly... Fun franchise. I think it was fun. Honestly, I prefer Tiny Toons over Random Maniacs. But we'll see how it goes. Show fo so far the the show. Here's the one piece of concern. The show is has confirmed the showrunner, and it's a lady named Erin Gibson, who I don't think has ever done anything in animation before. Honestly, I think she's only done like reality TV stuff. Like she she did a Gay of Thrones show. I have, I've never watched it. Honestly, I have no idea what it's about. But I saw her IMDb. Not, not really something I've I've ever seen or heard of, and none of that looked animated. So we'll see. It's a different animal. Maybe it makes more sense for her. Why she got hired, I have no idea. But we'll see. We'll see how we'll see how they handle it. Next, uh, it's been again confirmed that we're going to get a series based off of the well, the movies, the movie trilogy, uh, a, fi a fistful of dollars. Now, for those of you who don't know what that is, A Fistful of Dollars is the trilogy of The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Uh, the Man with No Name. Clint Eastwood, Cowboys, Western. All right, it's it's based off the Spaghetti Westerns by Sergio Leone. Uh, that's probably the franchise that brought, uh, that that made Clint Eastwood, you know, super famous. That, that brought him to superstardom. It's a great tra franchise, and The Man with No Name is a great character. It's very interesting. Uh, making a live action series about it could be fun, could be enjoyable. Uh, we again, we need to hear a little bit more about it. 
I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of Westerns. Okay. I, I like things that are slow paced. I like things that, you know, that they, it's a slow burn. I enjoy it. Uh, spaghetti Westerns are particularly kind of a slow burn, but when, when things go off, they really go off. Uh, concern <laughs> the, the person who's supposedly in talks to adapt this thing is a, a man named Brian Cogman, who is known for being a Game of Thrones writer. So that's immediately a concern for me. Um, I would have to go through which episodes here. It can't be anybody else but Scotty's looking identical to his dad, Clint Eastwood. The, anybody else is it would be the dumbest decision ever. So that's my two cents. Honestly, at least I'm not watching the first season. I'm not wasting my time with this garbage. Oh, or it would have to be somebody who's really good because honestly, Scott Eastwood's not that great of an actor, but he looks just like Clint Eastwood, so I'm torn. We'll see. Like, it would have to be something, somebody really, like, honestly, Viggo Mortensen. Who's just as good as Viggo Mortensen, but younger. Look at the new net off of Pacific Rim called Pacific Rim Black. We also kind of got a little bit of a look as to what the, well, what, a little bit of a, of a hint of what the series has released. The first look at the protagonists. Uh, which are the, the two kids that are here, which are two siblings, an idealistic teenage boy and his naive young sister. Now, wow, they are looking for their missing parents while piloting an abandoned Jaeger. Across, they will meet a lot of kaijus across their path. So it's not exactly clear what period of time this is. Uh, I, is it after Uprising? Is it after the original? Now, this uh, Pacific Rim is a fun franchise. I, I hated it the first time I watched it because to me it's like that's just you you stole Evangelion. That's exactly what happens. Uh, then a friend of mine told me like, dude, it's giant robots face fighting giant monsters. Just enjoy it. And so once I got over the plagiarism part of it, it's it honestly it is fun to see. It's fun to see giant mech mech robots fighting giant monsters. So the second one actually kind of sucked. Uh, the first one's good. The second one sucked. This one we have no idea what it's gonna be. I'm not a fan of the 3D kind of anime. I'm not a fan. I, I think it's lazy. I, I, I'm, a, I'm a 2D guy. I'm a cartoon guy. But we'll see. We haven't, like I said, we don't know exactly what the story is going to be about. We only have the first look at, at these two losers and the kaiju, which is basically a giant monster. We'll see what it's about. I'll, I'll give it a shot. The, the official, well, the showrunners of the show are Craig Kyle, who uh, who's responsible for Thor Ragnarok, which is funny. It's really funny. It's an okay, it's an okay MCU movie. I have issues with it, but it's okay. And Greg Johnson, who's responsible for X Men Evolution, which is a which is a series that I actually liked. It, I thought it was a really good show. A lot of people didn't like it. I don't know why, but I liked it. It's one of my favorite, um, my favorite. Uh, what is it? Representations? Well, no. It's my favorite. One of my favorite adaptations of Scarlet Witch. So, we'll see. I. Uh, We'll see. I need to see a trailer before I immediately hate it. Like I said, just one look and I'm like, I hate this style of animation. But if the story is good and it's got two people who kind of know what they're doing and at least know what's up with comic books. Uh, so they're, they're at least nerds. It has potential. But we'll see. Again, all this stuff we don't really have trailers for except the Animaniacs. But moving on, we have uh, a kind of a big piece of news because this, this I did not expect. But... The Power Rangers will return not only for to the silver screen, but to the big screen. So Brian Edward Hill is set to pen the next uh, the next Power Rangers film, and uh, will and also probably the next series. Now, they recently announced that they got a new director for the the franchise. It's going to be a film and TV franchise. I don't know if the writer is going to be set for the for the TV part of it too. But for those of you who don't know, jo Jonathan Entwistle will be directing, and he you can know you if you've seen the end of the fucking world or I hate this, uh, I fucking hate this. I don't know. It's two Netflix shows. You probably know that know the guy. I saw. I did not see the end of the fucking world. I saw the other one, and it was okay. It's it's the Netflix show with the girl from from it. You know the redhead. It's eh. Honestly, it's eh. But whatever. Uh, the writer, on the other hand, he is responsible for the TV show Titans, you know, based on the Teen Titans that's now on HBO Max, which I've heard good things about. Um, I've I, okay, I've heard conflicting things, but overall, the I've never heard anybody say I fucking hate it or you should never watch it. It's like, oh yeah, you should, you should watch it. You'd enjoy it. So I haven't seen it yet. Uh, it's it's on my list after I watch Doom Squad. Anyway, so it's been confirmed. They got him as a writer. 
Um, like I said, dude has experience, and uh, he's uh, he's known. He's he's a comic book writer as well. So maybe they finally get the Power Rangers back on track because the last movie was beyond stupid. Have I ranted on that movie before yet? I think I have. Anyway, I hated it. It was terrible. It was disgustingly bad. It was one of the worst things I've ever seen. Uh, I hate the whole, the villain has you dead to rights and she only takes out one and the, it, it's stupid. All right. The movie, yeah, maybe one day I'll do a breakdown if I'm, if I'm angry enough. Anyway, moving on, uh, sticking with, no, well, this is actually not Netflix, but sticking with that, returning to Netflix, it's been confirmed. Netflix has ordered a new Godzilla animated series. Now, God's this uh, the new show is going to be called Godzilla Singular Point and it will not I repeat it will not have anything to do with the previous trilogy. Now a few years back um, uh, Netflix made a, a, a trilogy well three films of uh, three Godzilla animated films again 3D animation which is kind of annoying but whatever. Uh, they were actually pretty fun they were a fun watch. So they made three movies uh, it was Godzilla Planet of Monsters at the Edge of the Battle and Planet Mount 2018. All of them were fun. Now this is going to be a show called Godzilla Singular Point. What the hell is it about? No idea. No idea. But it's I I've liked the things that they've done with Godzilla lately, and I liked what they did with Godzilla in the previous trilogy. I thought it was funny. It, ca- it kept me entertained. I was at the edge of my seat. So so far, better for the doubt. Uh, we don't know exactly when it's going to come out, but we do know that it's going to be uh, an animated show, and we'll probably get more news as you know it gets. It gets closer. Unfortunately, it will probably continue to use a style of CGI and hand-drawn techniques, which is again is like the 3D way of doing it. And uh, it's created by. Uh, it's going to be well. The series comes from two major Japanese people from My Hero Academia, as well as Studio Orange, who made B Stars. Now, have I talked about B Stars? B Stars is okay, I guess overall. It's basically a rated R version of Zootopia. Honestly, it's probably like a furry's dream. It's really weird. Uh, so if you like Zootopia, but you want a rated R version of it, and I like mean like and and you're kind of a furry, you'd probably like it. Anyway, uh, that that that's it for that one. Let's move on to the final TV show. That's actually the one that I'm most excited about. It has been confirmed that Amazon is working on a spin-off series based on The Boys. You know their hit series, The Boys, probably the best show. That's come out uh, in the better than the Mandalorian. Honestly, the boys is the best. I love it. The rated R superhero show. Um, it's been confirmed that it will be loosely inspired by the X Men parody comics called the G Men. All right. Now, again, <laughs> if you look at the li- of the characters here, you can pretty pretty clearly tell who the, who the parody is. Like right here, you can see this dude would be Cyclops. This dude would be Wolverine. This dude would be Iceman. This dude is Colossus. I believe she's Storm. This, I think, is Professor X. I believe this is Quicksilver. This dude is clearly Beast. This guy looks like Magneto. Now, it will be loosely inspired by... I don't know if it's loosely inspired by by these dudes, but here's the fun part. It looks like they plan to set it in kind of like a college-like setting. So, you know how the X-Men is a school, a school for mutants? Well, in the world of the boys, they have... Uh, you know, they have super, super powered beings that they're kind of like developing for them to work for, for Vought, the franchise, well, the, the company. Well, it makes sense for them to have a school, right? And so let me, and it's also being run by the same showrunner, Eric Kripke, who, you know, who created Supernatural, who created the boys. He's, he's still in charge of this. So that's a good thing. So it, it will be parallel to the TV show, the boys, but let me just read you a few statements, statements from that way. I don't have to explain myself. So. Part of the G-Men is they're sort of an educational college experience. And we just use that as a jumping off point, kind of similar to The Boys, where we sort of take an initial notion and then we're going to run with it in our own weird direction. Honestly, I hope, I hope that this is Blue Mountain State with superpowers. <laughs> I would love it. Did you guys ever watch Blue Mountain State? It's great. It's stupid. It's uh, it's basically about a college team and, and their white, uh, a college football team and their wild shenanigans. It is a fantastically stupid show. So if they take that that direction, except that it's due to the superpowers, I am all in. College shenanigans with superpower beings would be hysterical. And rated R college shenanigans are even better. Honestly, I can't wait. I'm, I'm super excited. 
Uh, let me just keep read you a, a few more statements. Uh, me and Seth Rogen and Evan Goldberg and Craig Rosenberg, we don't feel the need to jam spinoffs out there. We were just talking and we stumbled onto this idea and we were so excited about it. We took it to Amazon because we think there's a real opportunity to see another part of the VOT world. But probably more importantly, to make a show that isn't really made that often, which is what we love about it, which is as the boys is an unflinching look at reality. The goal for this is to make this superhero show one of the most realistic college shows anyone's made and really deal with real college issues and really explore what it's like to be that age. So for those of you who don't know, Seth Rogen actually appeared on a TV show, a college TV show um, a few uh, a few years back. Let me just remember what the name of the show is. It was created by the same people who created Freaks and Geeks. Uh, I, I'm, forget, I'm blanking on its name right now, but it was a great show. It's, it wasn't accepted, except it was a movie. Oh, God. What was the name of that? This is going to drive me. I have to look it up. I have to look it up. So I'm going to have to go all the way back. It was Freaks and Geeks. Undeclared. Undeclared. Great show, by the way. Did not live very long. It was only like 18 episodes or something. But I loved it. It was great. And he appeared in it. And it was created by... Uh, let me just check his name while I'm already here. Because this is going to bug me. Uh, created by Judd Apatow. There you go. Judd Apatow. So, it's a great show. It was a funny show. I loved it. And so, if they add kind of some of the the things that they were trying to do with, with the show Undeclared to, you know, the world of the, of the boys, that'd be fantastic. Honestly, it'd be, honestly I'd, I'd, I'd be in it. I, I hope it's not just a stoner show, but I thought, I, I can't wait. Honestly, I'm very excited. I'm, I'm, I'm even, I'm, I, I can't find the words. I can't find the words. Um, so, the show is described as an, a reverent R-rated series that explores the lives of hormonal competitive supers as they put their physical, sexual, and moral boundaries to the test. Yes, 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 and yes. Yes. I dude, I I can't wait. Honestly, I can't wait. And check out check this out. This will be blending the pitfalls of a college series with the gritty competitive nature of the Hunger Games. Of the Hunger Games. So, I mean, they're going to be killing each other left and right. This is going to be great. It, 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 I I will control myself. Let's just say it seems fun. It seems enjoyable. I am looking forward to it. Hopefully you are as well. Uh, rated R college action superheroes. Wow. Who would have thunk? Who would have thunk? Hopefully they don't fuck it up. Anyway, uh, that's it for today. That's it for today. Uh, I went through a lot. What, what is it? Ooh, almost half an hour. Whoops. Uh, that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. As always, any comments, questions, or suggestions, you can find me at Dario the Show on Instagram and at Super Dario World. Also, live streaming, like I said, Twitch at Super Dario World, YouTube at Super Dario World. As always, thank you for listening, and I'll see you again next time.